Rub up your engines! Well, I just read a great article that agreed with me. Gas stations won't turn into EV charging points anytime soon. Well, I knew they're not going to, but this guy, he analyzed the whole thing. And of course, he came to the conclusion that why on earth would somebody running a gas station want to put a whole bunch of money into an infrastructure? And he said, if you included all the infrastructure, the power, the lines, the charging, building up this place so he's got some entertainment for people to do while they're waiting for an hour for their car to charge, is not worth it. He said that might cost over a million bucks per station, and as the man says, he'll never recoup his investment. Typical convenient gas stations face hurdles to adding EV chargers or completely switching to EV charging stations. I, of course, added a thing years ago. If you look at the statistics, California has the most electric cars in the United States. They got over a million of them, right? Even in California, 90% of the charging, 90% is done at home. You charge it at your level two charger at home. Why would anybody build gas stations with electric chargers to only get 10% of the business. It would be as if everyone in the United States today had an oil rig in their backyard and had their own gasoline, and they only had to buy gasoline when they went out. So who would build hundreds of thousands of gas pumps or millions when you're only getting 10% of the business? Of course, they wouldn't. If that had happened, all the gas stations, most of them would shut down because they can only make 10% of the profit. Think of electricity the same way, only it's real. Everyone does have an electric power line at their house. They can put their own charger in, and if only 10% of their business is done on the road, why would anybody invest in an infrastructure where they're not going to collect a profit to build on? The only way they can make a profit would be just charging outrageous fees for electricity to charge your car. And you say, they charge 10 times more than I can charge it at home. I'm never going to charge it there. I'll just make sure I keep charging my car up, right? And then the people that did interstate, if they were paying that kind of high rate, guess what? People wouldn't buy the electric cars or they'd get rid of the ones they had, sell them to somebody in a city who charged it themselves back in for it to not have to buy it on the road. So anybody that thinks magically there's going to be charging stations built up, don't hold your breath or you'll die of oxygen depletion. <laughs> Well, even I didn't think of this one, but a driverless car in San Francisco got stuck in the wet concrete. This was one of the cruise driverless taxis. It didn't know that concrete's wet, so it drove in it and got stuck. And there's a picture of it stuck in the wet concrete. <laughs> There's so many unknowns driving down the road, you know? And this one just drove in the concrete, and that sat there. And then they had to get it out. Of course, they had to fix the concrete, too. It would have ruined the concrete to, to do that all over again. And then the bad kids putting their name in and throwing stuff in the wet concrete. Well, I guess this cruise just couldn't resist, and it drove itself into the concrete and then got stuck and didn't know what to do and couldn't get out. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Okay, drivers, things happen. Cars slide, right? Then people come, they push them out of the way. They learn how to jerk it out, get it in, put it in reverse, forward, rock it back and forth. Well, obviously, these machines don't know how to do that. So when they get into a quagmire, they just sit there and get stuck. <laughs> Even I didn't think of that. Gee, maybe they'll drive through concrete and get stuck. Well, in this case, yes, it did happen. They're not saying who's paying for what, but they're not going to be able to sneak out on it because everybody took pictures of it. So whoever made that concrete is going to realize, well, Cruz did it. They're going to have to pay for this whole thing now, and they won't be able to wheedle their way out of it because the stupid machine decided it was going to drive in wet concrete. Yet another reason driverless taxis are stupid. Scotty Kilmer fan says, Scotty, what's your opinion on a new Hyundai? hybrids hybrid system as good as a Toyota or is it just crap well I have to say it's not as good as Toyota because when I went from Rhode Island to Tennessee this time coming back from one house to the other I saw one of those being towed down the road on a tow truck so it broke I rarely see a Toyota hybrid being towed but I saw that Hyundai being towed I am not a Hyundai fan whether it's gasoline whether it's hybrid or whether it is full electric I'm not a fan of the Korean car manufacturers they've had too many problems in the past if they have problems in the past hey I'm assuming they're also gonna have problems in the future and I don't want to get involved in it. I'm still driving Toyota. They last so long, maybe I'll never have to buy another car. I don't know. Yeah. The Matrix has got 100,000 miles on it now, right? I've seen it with 500,000. There's no way I'm going to put 400,000 more. I don't drive that much. So who knows? But I would not buy a Korean car. I just don't like them. John Paretti says, Scotty, how do you feel about getting a Toyota Corolla if you drive six to 7,000 miles a year? How many miles? Is too little or bad for the battery? Oh, no, that's perfectly fine. Don't even worry about it. You're running a car. Last year, uh, my wife's 
I think we put 5,000 miles on. Runs perfectly fine. I do have to admit, when I travel around, I leave one car in Tennessee and take the other one to Rhode Island. When I come back to Tennessee three months later, yeah, I usually got to charge up the battery because I'm too lazy to park it somewhere and put a trickle charger on it, right? So that's no problem whatsoever. But yeah, that many miles is perfectly fine. The battery is going to have any problems at all. Peter Grant says, Scotty, what's your opinion about a Think Tool Think Car Mini Scanner? Okay, they're decent scanners. There's so many scanners out there today, it wouldn't make your head spin around like something in The Exorcist. And that's a decent scan tool for the price. Just realize there's all kinds of scan tools out there and all kinds of prices. How much do you want to do? And of course, the problem is when you're deciding what to buy, all of the companies, it doesn't matter which one it is, lie about the abilities of their scan tool. They'll say it does this, that, and this. And then you get it plugged in your car and find out, oh, it doesn't do that on my car. Then you call up the company and if they answer the phone, which I hardly ever do, but if they do or they take an email, they'll just say, oh, we are sorry, your scan tool does not support ABS bleeding for that particular model, right? But they'll tell you, oh, it does ABS bleeding. So you never know until you buy it and try it on your car. But it is a lower price scan tool. So I mean, hey, for what you're paying, you get a decent scan tool. But don't believe the hype of any of these companies when they tell you this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. It'll even make toast for you. No, it won't. Some cars it does a lot. Some cars it does a little. Some cars it does in between. Depends on your make, model, and no one size fits all for any of them. Even the $5,000 ones, they got little problems here and there for its particular model. None of them are perfect. Cornelius 2 said, Scotty, what are your thoughts about the new Acura Integra Type S? They made Acuras for a long time, the Acura Integras, right? Sporty little car, la, la, la. Then they stopped making them. Then I guess two or three years ago, they came back. I think it was two years ago. They came back. Now we're making the Acura Integra again. All it was was a rebadged Honda Civic. I road tested one. I was not impressed for the money. You might as well just buy a Honda Civic. Forget it, right? Because I was not impressed by the new Acura Integra. It's a Type S. It's got better specs and stuff. Maybe it'll be a lot better? I don't know, but I'd have to get some data with my computers and actually drive one and see what I think. American Ninja said, Scotty, what do you think of a 2012 Toyota Tacoma double cab pre-runner? 120,000 miles for 15 grand. Well, they're all expensive these days. Realize, you want to buy a brand new one in the real world where you're actually buying it and you pay all the crap that goes on, dealer destination tax, all that crap. You're paying one third the price of a new one. It's got 120,000 miles. I guarantee you, it's got more than two thirds of its life left and you're only paying one third for it. So you're actually making out okay as long as you have a mechanic check it out. I always realize that. How much am I paying? What does a new one cost? How much lifespan I have? And those things last a long time. So as long as it's in great shape, that's the money those things go for. As he crafts said, Scotty, how do I stop the CIA from hijacking my car if I'm wanted or something? What kind of a car do you have, you know? <laughs> do you really think they're going to want to hijack your car, right? <laughs> now, if you're worried that the CIA is coming for you, I'd advise going off grid anyways and not having a car because they could trace you. <laughs> Now, this is myths that people have about hijacking cars. I mean, any mechanic can take any modern car if they really wanted to. They would just make a key for it, use their computer. Once they get in the car, they can reprogram the car to work off of that key or keyless remote that they have programmed to work in the car. So anybody who knows their stuff can take your car. You can't stop them, right? But if you're that paranoid, you think the CIA is coming for you, I'd say go off grid right now. Go into Mojave Desert or something, build an underground bunker and live there. <laughs> Well, Volvo's making their first minivan. It's going to be electric. People have called it an electric living room on wheels. It's going to be called the Volvo M90. It's their first van, minivan. They say it's going to have an enormous amount of leg room. I find it interesting. They never made a minivan. Now they're going to be making an electric one. Well, see, I have to say, they have good designers. I road tested a brand new 2023 Volvo electric car, and I was totally impressed. It was designed like a car. Yeah, it's got all this infrastructure your problems with electricity. There's no getting by that. But as a standalone vehicle, I was quite impressed by what Volvo had built. Mind you, it was like 65,000 bucks too. They're not giving them away. And it was a special Volvo electric car. It was one that was made in Belgium. They make a lot of them in China. They make some of them in Belgium. This was a Belgian one brought to the United States. And I was quite impressed. I do have to say. Volvo seems to know what they're doing with electric cars. Now, maybe it fits Volvo because Volvo have always been a niche car. It's a niche car manufacturer. Back in the day hippies drove them soccer moms like the big ones with room it's a definite niche car so maybe electric cars will be niche and volvo will have a nice little niche for electric cars and in this case electric minivans who knows Maybe they will have a niche and it'll build up over time. It's not going to happen overnight, but hey, they seem to have a smarter take on electricity than say, gee, I'm the set. Half of our cars will be electric cars. We'll sell millions of them. Yeah, Volvo looks like they got a better stance. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.